Hello and welcome to the Spectrum Health Cardiac Rehab Education Series. My name is Grayson. I am an exercise specialist with Spectrum Health Cardiac Rehab, and this presentation will review the fundamentals of exercise. Regular exercise has shown a reduction in cardiovascular disease risk factors, including improvements in cholesterol, blood pressure, body composition, blood sugar regulation, and reduction in blood platelet adhesiveness and inflammation. Studies suggest that regular exercise can also help to reduce risk in developing colon or breast cancer. Exercise can help to prevent and even reverse non-insulin dependent diabetes, more commonly known as type 2 diabetes. Exercise can also delay the onset of osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Exercise can even help with psychological disorders such as anxiety or depression. Exercise increases the threshold for the onset of disease signs and symptoms. It helps to improve our cognitive and physical function. Exercise can even enhance our independent living, reducing the risk of any falls and injuries. Higher levels of activity and fitness are associated with lower death rates from cardiovascular disease. A MET is a unit of measurement that describes the energy cost of activities. At rest, the energy cost for every individual is one MET. As we engage in higher intensity activities, our muscles require more energy, so we are then working at a higher MET level. Less than three METs is considered light physical activity, three to six METs is considered moderate physical activity, and greater than six METs is considered vigorous physical activity. An exercise stress test can help to determine the maximum MET level that you can achieve. And a target MET level range can help guide exercise intensity. Many of the exercise machines will display the MET level for you. With exercise training, your MET capacity or fitness can increase and a higher MET capacity will lead to overall better outcomes for your health. To reduce our risk for cardiovascular disease, Exercise is recommended five to seven days per week. For optimal weight loss, or if managing blood sugars, seven days per week is optimal. A number of tools can be used to determine an appropriate exercise intensity. Rating of perceived exertion or effort, also known as RPE, is often used as it can apply to any individual. Using a rating of perceived effort, aim for an exercise that you perceive as moderate to hard. If you have had a stress test done, a target heart rate or MET range can also help to determine an appropriate exercise intensity for you. It is important to remember that all exercise should be done symptom free. Exercise is recommended at least 30 minutes each day with 30 to 60 minutes being optimal. 60 to 90 minutes may be recommended for weight loss. The exercise also doesn't have to come all at once. Exercise done in as little as 10 minute bouts throughout the day can still be effective. After a cardiac related event or procedure, patients may begin with as little as one to 10 minutes of exercise on their first day. As far as which exercise works best, find the one that you enjoy the most. Take into consideration the goals that you want to achieve with your exercise, as well as any limitations you may have with joint discomfort or range of motion. Some exercise routines can combine aerobic and anaerobic metabolism, otherwise known as interval training. Interval training is a form of exercise where an individual alternates between moderate to vigorous and intensities for short periods of time. These short bouts of vigorous intensity exercise can help the individual to increase their MET capacity and overall exercise tolerance. It is important to warm up the body before participating in exercise. Warming up allows the body to adjust to the increased demands of exercise. Engaging in a warm up will also reduce the likelihood of symptoms, improve range of motion, reduce the risk of injury, and can even improve performance during exercise. A quality warm up should consist of five to 10 minutes of light to moderate aerobic activity. At the end of your exercise, it is equally important to cool down. Cooling down allows the body to recover safely, giving your heart rate and blood pressure time to gradually decrease. 
Stretching is a great way to cool down following exercise. Flexibility is often forgotten when formulating a well-rounded exercise routine. However, stretching can help with injury prevention, increased range of motion, which makes daily tasks easier, and improved postural stability and balance. Flexibility exercises are most effective when the muscles are already warm. And while stretching, hold the stretch for about 10 to 30 seconds and avoid bouncing. Try to stretch each of the major joints in the body and always remember to breathe throughout your stretch. Before increasing your exercise frequency, duration, or intensity, all signs or symptoms of exercise intolerance should be absent. This can include pain or pressure, an inability to catch your breath, nausea, cold sweats, dizziness, sudden confusion, lack of coordination, sudden weakness or numbness in arms, face, or legs, or even speech or vision disturbances. There are certain situations we need to be careful of because they put us at a higher risk of a heart event occurring. These situations include snow shoveling heavy wet snow, extreme cold air temperatures, long endurance races, deer hunting, sighting and dragging the deer, highly competitive sports activities, and extreme emotional events, whether it's sports fanaticism, anger, or a traumatic event. And, and these situations are even higher risk for sedentary individuals. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please write them down and bring them to your next cardiac rehab visit.